Hey, welcome to a drive-by review of the EFM 11 to 22 millimeter lens, the only wide angle native lens option available for the Canon M50 currently. And when you have that APS sensor crop and you're playing around with it, you're gonna get this deep down desire to have a wide angle lens. And the great thing about this particular option is it also has image stabilization and that STM autofocusing system for quiet autofocusing. But the question is, how does it perform with real world use? Well, let's take a closer look at this lens, slap it on the M50 body, and see how it performs. Now what's awesome about this lens is that it is compact and affordable. You know, but that comes with a price. Uh, the reason why it's not the fastest lens is to keep it compact and, and cost effective. But you're gonna see that this is quite small. In fact, comparing it to the kit lens, it's virtually the same size when it's in its, uh, you know, packed away, locked position. When you unlock it, you gain a little bit there when you go right to that 11 millimeter position, right? And Man, I just love the quality of their M series lenses. Just everything's so well made. And the nice thing about wide angle lenses is they kind of all have the superpower where the minimum focus range is so close. You can get really close to your subject. And if you want to get that buttery smooth background, even with this slower lens, you can do so by getting really, really close. Now as a wide angle lens, it should be phenomenal for taking group shots indoors, tight spaces, landscape shots. And since you can zoom out, to that 22 millimeter focal length, it's also a great walk around lens. However, I wouldn't use this to replace the 22 millimeter I just reviewed because as a prime lens, I think that's gonna be a little bit more crystal clear as far as the quality of the shots. And also that's a faster lens, but I'll save my judgment to the end of this because this could blow me away, especially with that internal stabilization. All right, guys, I'm excited about this. Let's see how this lens performs on the Canon M50. True to its claim, at 11 millimeters, this lens has an impressive field of view, able to easily capture full rooms of various size simply by shooting from a corner or the wall. And shooting wide open at f4, I didn't have any issues with indoor lighting, which was a pleasant surprise. And in that video montage, you can see I was playing around with the 120 frames per second with the image stabilization from the lens on. Now to give you an idea of how well the image stabilization works when the camera is handheld, here are a few shots in the first one starting with just the lens image stabilization through this shot. Now with the second shot, this is with the addition of the M50 digital stabilization on, and you'll notice it slightly crops the image to utilize that function. And the last shot is switched to the enhanced stabilization mode from the M50 body, which you'll notice has a significant crop and makes the field of view similar to 22 millimeters, even though the lens is still at 11 millimeters. And that's generally more of a crop than I'll tolerate to utilize when actually creating videos that I'm gonna utilize later. The wide angle also makes it a great option for room and real estate shots in general, as you'll be able to fit in everything you want to on most occasions. I have the distortion correction setting off in the M50, so you'll see the worst case scenario with barrel distortion in these photos, accentuated by the straight lines and the bricks and floor patterns in this home. Although to my eye, I found it really worked quite well with the composition in many of these photos, so I left it off for most of the shots even going forward. I also really enjoyed the unique perspective this lens offered with how close you could get to your subjects and was able to get some adequate bokeh even, blurring of the background, utilizing that minimum focus range. As expected, in lower light conditions and at night, the M50 body had to compensate for the F4 maximum aperture by using a higher ISO. However, I was able to continue shooting handheld, even in those darker settings, without issue. Although I found myself to be most impressed with the crystal clear detail this lens was able to capture with ample lighting. And there you have it, the EFM 11 to 22 millimeter lens. And as you can probably tell, I'm using it right now to get this nice wide field of view compared to my intro shot, it's humongous. And in fact, right now I have the opposite problem where I have more of a field of view than I do interesting room to fill it in with. So that's something I have to address in the future, I'm sure. And that's what I really love about this lens option. It really does fill in the gap for the M50 on its native lens options for something that has a wide field of view. And combined with that image stabilization, it's perfect for those vlogging style shots where people walk around with the camera right in their hand. And also for these type of shots where you're doing some sort of review or some sort of video about a product and you wanna maybe get more of you in the shot or more of the product in the shot and its surrounding area. And it's just phenomenal for that. And as you guys saw, if you combine it with 
the enhanced stabilization in the M50 or even the step down, it really can smooth out some of those shakier shots if you got poor control, you got the camera out in front of you, and it really gets a lot better than when you pull it in, as you saw in some of those um, more interior shots where I was able to stabilize myself a little bit better than just walking out into the yonder trying to, you know, get those stepping shakes to minimize with the M50 stabilization. And as for the all around aspect of this lens, I can see why people say that this could be one of those lenses you just place on your camera and use almost solely. However, I think personally, I would always keep a faster prime lens option available like the 22 millimeter because there's gonna be a lot of times, at least I'm gonna to wanna to utilize that very thin depth of field and of course, better low light performance because when I'm shooting video and you're limited to the frame rate, you know, you don't wanna be shooting past 3200 ISO. Really, I like to keep it below 1000 if possible. And you know, if you're not bringing around your own lighting, that's tough to do. And if with an F4 aperture, there's no way you're gonna stay that low. So it's just something where I think, I get why it would be all around, but I think I'm always gonna keep something else in the pack to make sure that I can tackle those challenges out in the field if they all of a sudden hit me. Now, if you're interested in this lens for yourself, I'll post a link down in the description below so you can check out the lens and purchase it if you're feeling frisky. And of course, give me your comments, suggestions, and recommendations. If you got anything you gotta say, post it in the comments down below. I love to read those things. And also stay tuned because I have the EFM 32 millimeter in the mail and I'm excited to review that one as well. All right guys, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time on Drive-By Reviews.